This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and who says this game is pay to win when decks like this exist in the meta? Um, this deck has no rares in the main deck, and the sideboard is a companion, so of course that's a rare in Lurus of the Dream Den. And you don't always need this, but it does make the deck a lot better. So we're calling this a one rare deck. Now you can also quickly, I'm going to say, if you want to play castle, the white castle with instead of planes, that makes sense too. You can do that if you wish to, but you don't have to. I believe I had one in my deck for a few of the games that we saw, but otherwise it's unchanged from what you saw. And this deck isn't just a joke. I honestly believe this is one of the best decks in the format. And if you are going to grind the ladder and you don't have a lot of money, this is a very easy way to do it. Guys, I'm saying it straight up. This deck is competitive in Mythic. It is great for doing dailies and it can get you to Mythic. So do indeed consider checking it out. What is it? How does it work? It's, you might hear it called a Boggles deck though it's not exactly that. The idea of Boggles was to play hexproof creatures and then put auras on them. Our creatures are not hexproof, but it's basically a, you might also hear it called a Voltron deck, where we just want to assemble a lot of auras onto one creature and smash the opponent to death. Traditionally, the issue with putting a ton of auras onto a creature and trying to smash the opponent to death is that removal of any kind ruins the fun and this deck has ways to protect your creatures from that removal which is why it's resilient and what makes it good so what we're trying to have is we always want a ginger brute or a healer's hawk on turn one i'll see life's bounty is okay too but really these are the cards that we want on turn one to suit up with all of our auras after that, we want to play either all that glitters, which gets buffed just from any other enchantments, or we want some combination of Sentinel's Eyes, which gives Vigilance, or Sentinel's Mark, which also gives Vigilance, and Glaring Aegis, which gives plus one, plus three, and taps a defender, letting you hit the opponent in the face, and Solid Footing, which gives plus one, plus one, and as long as Enchanted Creature has Vigilance, it assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. So that plus one, plus two is actually a plus two, plus one. That plus one, plus three is actually a plus three, plus one. This is what gives the deck more oomph when it doesn't draw all that glitters, because without it, the clock is often too slow and you die a hideous death. But now that we have a nice fast clock with, say, Glaring Aegis, Solid Footing, and Sentinel's Mark, we need to protect our fast, mega-suited-up creature. And that's where Life's Bounty and God's Willing and Karametra's Blessing come in by protecting it from removal. Karametra's Blessing has to hit a creature that's enchanted, which shouldn't be hard since we have 20 auras here. But when it does, the creature gains Hexproof and Indestructible and a plus two, plus two bonus. God's Willing protects from a color, so any kind of target or damage. Naming Red will protect from Deafening Clarion. Naming Blue will protect something from being stolen by of Treachery. And Alcide of Life's Bounty sacrifices to do the same thing. The Lurus of the Dream Den is a key card in the deck because often the opponent will figure out a way they will somehow kill one of your creatures. But then you have Lurus in the chamber, you cast Lurus, you replay an Alcide of Life's Bounty to protect the Lurus, and you start playing the enchantments out of your graveyard again, creating a new mecha monster, and you win that way. The deck has a lot of good matchups in the meta. Cycling has a horrible time dealing with a suited up hawk, for example, just gaining too much life for them to race. The Agent of Treachery deck, if you have, if you survive a sweeper or two with God's Willing and Karametra's Blessing to defend from Agent of Treachery, you usually fly over for the victory or become unblockable. Mono Red? Forget about it. Mono Red, please. Have you seen what happens when they have a Healer's Hawk that has protection from red and all that glitters in about three other enchantments? Mono Red's head explodes. So yeah, this deck is competitive. It is real, and we're going to dive in and I'm going to show you how to let Mono White win you games on a budget.
Our opener has the combo and Ginger Boot and Hawk. No protection, but we're on the play. Let's hope for the best. Karametra's blessing, a god's willing, a life's bounty. These things would be nice. So, Hawk or Brute? Brute, I guess, can be a faster clock because it hits on turn one. And the land is tapped. So if the opponent's playing red-green or if they're playing Reclamation, I think we just want to move in. It could have Brazen Borrower, which would be ouch, but I think I just want to hit them as fast and hard as possible. Now, if we can give this thing Vigilance, that's the trick. All right. Let's try to resolve this card. If the opponent tries to target this in response, we can protect it. Nope. Does look to be Teamer Reclamation. Let's deploy the troops. We're looking for an All That Glitters or a Sentinel's Eyes to really put this thing away. Our opponent has the perfect draw for them, which is Growth Spiral into Wilderness Reclamation. They can't possibly ask for more. And now they're going to Scorching Dragonfire the Life's Bounty. Let's just God's Willing to protect. That's a good one. Now our opponent with opt-in response. There was a risk there if they had a Brazen Borrower of a blowout. But I think they'd have played it a little different if that were the case. I think they'd have done something on my upkeep or my turn, but maybe not. Down to six. Say go. Keep up the protection. And here it is. Can you go off? Uro. Well... That is helpful. I have seven points of damage. My opponent's at nine life. A little bit of life gain can go a long way. Of course, all that glitters off the top or another Karametra's Blessing and we should be able to win, but the opponent scoops it up. Perhaps they were tilted that their mythic Uro could not compete with the commoner Ginger Brute. All right, enchant up. It's not that great, but it it will have to do. It's another kind of hawk and a prayer type of hand. Our opponent takes a mulligan to six. They have bolus sleeves. They have a triome. Are they the villain we fear? So there could be a turn to omen. So I guess we'll play this nice and easy. Charming Prince. What does that usually mean, Winota? Winota. Maybe some kind of a blink deck, but usually Winota. So we need a quicker clock. Ugh. All right, so next turn, what do they want to do? They want to play Legion Warboss, they want to attack with a 1-1, one, one, and they want to make their Winota look awesome for the following turn. How do we make that more awkward? We could play Lurus. If they have a Teferi, though, that's a punish, and these decks usually do run Teferi, so I don't like that. This has Flash, so we could play it later. I think, since it only is a plus one, I think what we do is we play Sentinel's Eyes... I guess I really do want to keep attacking right through this Charming Prince, though. Or no, this could ambush a Legion War Boss token. So let's put Sentinel's Eyes on a Hawk. And let's attack. Just having Vigilance also ambushes it. Me and Vigilance. 
We're not good friends. We don't know how to function together. Nom. All that glitters. You're telling me there's a chance. All right. Down to seven with a Karametra's Blessing in hand. If we use the Life's Bounty to protect our Hawk from an agent. Oh, it's a Guard Mage. It's not Winota. They're stalling. I gained so much life. This is so stupid. I guess I could do Protection from Blue, right? If I do Protection from Blue, do I win? Let's find out. Could have also used the bounty, but the bounty is an enchantment for all that glitters, so it makes all that glitters better. Boom. Exaxes. You love to see it. No creature means no keepy. All right, a uh, bounty, a hawk, and a blessing. Can definitely put a land away. And here's my hawk. Definitely a weak hand, but there's only so much mulliganing you really want to do. And maybe we can draw into something to make it better. I'm just going to deploy the whole field of dorks and not worry about using any kind of protection from this because we don't have much else to play and we need to hit the opponent. Also, if we draw all that glitters, we want it to be really good. Our opponent start now with Tapland City. I mean, we're just gonna 1-1 one -one them to, d to death. To complete death. And hope that they don't have sweepers of some kind. Uro. Okay. That's not good. Offsets our hard work here. Opponent on... Oh. Team Wreck again. Okay. I don't know how we're going to get through this, but I definitely don't play the Lurus without protecting it. I guarantee the opponent's got something up their sleeve here. Uro spam. Groan. A shock in a breeding pool. Can we get a third Uro, do you think? Ooh, just mana being open. Interesting. So, some kind of a counter spell. Mystical Dispute. Not very good against us. If they shocked to play a Mystical Dispute, I'm pretty happy. And I'm not going to give them something to do with it. Okay, they shocked to play a Growth Spiral. We'll see how that works out for them. Graveyard at 3, Graveyard at 4, Opponent at 12. No plays. Alright. Well. What could block? I guess a Brazen Borrower, but that Flash is in? So yeah, I don't think there's any use for this card other than to suit up. All right, continue the assault. We've got a baby typhoon. Okay. Let's see the block. Let's pump with blessing. Mystical Dispute, sure. 
A very expensive way to do it. So now what? But they've got a 2-2. Two -two. I guess handing out protection doesn't do any good. We may as well gain one life. And we can get it back if we draw a land with Lurus and still have God's Willing open, so... Plus, getting the Mystical Dispute, I'm guessing they have more of them, but it's doing a good job filling their graveyard. I suppose what I could have done differently is not play the, play the Aegis, and I would have had mana to pay for a Dispute, but I still don't think I'd pay for it, because it just opens you up to a lot of bad things like Storm's Wrath. Yeah, we're in pretty bad need of some stronger pump spell. We are... Our pecking them to death is far too slow of a clock. Hey, look at there. They're at 11. I can go protection from blue, but this doesn't quite hit hard enough. They also have Mystical Dispute open again. How do we get around that? I think they're always going to have mana open. I think we have to go for it and try to play it out of the graveyard if Lurus ever resolves. Yep, not surprising. Sad Hawk. Yeah, that Uro's a problem. Wilderness Reclamation pretty much any time, but when they're leaving up all that mana, you know it's like Shark Typhoons and Counter Spells. Yeah, they're digging for Reclamation now, I guess. They don't have other things to do with their mana, but when they actually get to resolve Chemistry's Insight, it feels so bad. Interesting. Alright, so they can make a 3-3. I guess let's go see what happens when we attack with our Hawk. Opponent will take this one. So it's not another Typhoon. I guess it's just digging and digging. Scorching Dragonfire. I mean... We got to try to protect our Lurus, and we should at least try to protect it from the Exile effect. Interesting. Grow Spiral in response. And they miss, so they don't have any... They don't have any lands in their hand. It's all something. And I'm tapped out. So Storm's Wrath is GG. But when you're behind, you have to try to make silly plays. Just to stay in it. Opponent with infinite mana. <laughs> yep. That works. That really works. Anyway, I've seen enough. Ooh. I mean, there was a hawk and a dream. But heck yeah. Why not? Get it. Our opponent with a grazer on one after taking a mulligan to five. So... What's going on here? Some sort of a high variance deck. Winota, perhaps? And now a passing with the lands. So let's go into second hawk. And Aegis on first hawk. Tap Grazer. And get in. Send that message. Goose. All right. Does feel a little Winota-ish. 
Most decks in best of one don't have to mulligan, but Winota does. So, because we want to go over the top of the Grazer, we want to put this Glaring Aegis on one Hawk. And we'll still tap the Grazer for this turn. And then we'll put the All That Glitters on this Hawk so that they can both be attacking. And the clock is going to be a quick one. Down to nine. I would really love to draw any of our plus one plus one enchantments to create a lethal clock and force the blocks to begin. And our opponent with a hanged executioner here. It is the Winota deck. As soon as next turn they could neoform. Ooh, white. Oh man, but protection from white isn't good enough. Oh, so I could also green. There's still a blocker here. Let's go here. And let's create the offense. They're gonna have to block somewhere. But they could Neoform the Hanged Executioner into a Winota next turn, even off two mana. And they have to chump once here, but then they get two Winota triggers. So I guess I have to be ready to use a God's Willing and hope that they only hit one Agent of Treachery. Let's see if they go for it. Here it comes. Yep, and there it is. Let's see if they attack with both here. Wow, okay. So there's no blocker. They hit an agent. They target my hawk. Here's protection from blue. And now they need to hit... I think we put that on the bottom. Now they need to hit something else uh, that can block a flyer. And it's Kenrith. That won't do. Aha! Your mythic Winota. No! Wait. We still have enough. We still have enough. They only have one blocker. And we have... Two hawks, baby. Kaka. On the play. Let's go. Fighting Yorian? Yep. <laughs> Ginger Brute, all that glitters beats. That's the that's the evil plan. Your 80 card deck is no match for Ginger Brute. Tap the land, you say? Ha ha. Let's see if they have Glass Casket. It's a little risky with that play if they do have a two mana interaction spell, but alas, here we go. All right, play a bounty. Play a bounty. So thick. So strong. And we'll see if the opponent's a Clarion player. Alright, so the key here is one is going to die, but the other can live. So we sacrifice this. Wait, this. To protect this from red. And this doesn't die. All right, Luris could bring this back. I think that's way too aggressive. We get absolutely blown out by the next trick. So, not necessary. Let's just sit on our mana and prepare to win. Fires of Invention shuts down what you can do on my turn. This next play better be a doozy. It's Shatter the Sky. Okay, well, we have to give Indestructible to the Brute. <clears throat> and we can sacrifice this for protection, but it doesn't matter. We do get to draw a card. Aegis might be able to do it here. Yes, it will. I think it will. Let's find out. Getting to six. That's five. Luris. Bounty. Math is 
for me, I guess. If our opponent is white Charlie, are we covert go white? Finally, solid footing Sentinels Mark and Aegis. Time for another hawk and a dream moment. There isn't much protection for this hawk though. This hawk might get blown up if we don't draw Karametra's blessing. Yes, our opponent gets it. They really get it. Nice, all right. Um, these first, I think. Well, no. I We can play this and then flash in the footing. And then next turn the mark, and then we start dealing big damage. I don't know. Let's just... Let's just go for max damage in the air. The opponent's not going to interact with us. What are we... What are we playing around with protection in the mirror? Nothing. So let's make the biggest hawk. The the really bad part is that this can give protection from white. Wait, Daxos? What? Our opponent's improvising. Maybe they do have something. Maybe we should play careful. Maybe I don't know everything about their deck. We are hitting for seven a turn because of the combination. Solid footing, if this has vigilance, damage equal to its toughness rather than power, and the glaring Aegis. Pride mate. I, I thought I respected you. Why a ginger brute, do you think? Because you can sacrifice it to gain life, duh. It's life gain. It's a combo. <laughs> of course it's a combo. Oh boy. So, if they're going to gain a lot of life, we have to deal a lot of damage. Alright, I'm just going to play my Lurus. Have Blessing available to protect. Doesn't protect the Lurus, but if the opponent wants to remove that, it's fine. 35 to 5, who's the life gain deck? Also interesting, they can't play Banishing Light, they can't play Conclave Tribunal, they can't play Heliod, they can't play Ajani, they give up Linden, they give up so much to be a life gain deck with Lurus. Why not play this deck? This deck's legit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They gave lifelink to that bu that boy. So what they can do, though, is use the life's bounty to protect it from white, but then it loses the mark. But I believe it's lifelink until end of turn, even if the mark goes away. Because it's more like a spell effect because of addendum. So yeah, they need to attack with this. Oh, they don't. They are not willing. They are not willing to make that play. Hawk on the draw with a lot of a lot of pants. We need to draw a footing or we need to draw the uh, all that glitters. Let's go for it. Our opponent's on the Luro. Lurry Lurry boy. Doing another cat nightmare. And they have red mana in their deck and it's cycling. This deck is really solid against cycling a good amount of the time. Oh my gosh, we drew the solid footing. As long as they don't kill our hawk, right now, we should be fine. Healer, all right. Well, they're going to gain life too. This will be an interesting race. What am I playing around by not throwing more auras on my hawk? I'm not sure, but I've seen weird stuff out of cycling decks. Plus, I might get to ambush this healer if the opponent is too, um, what would you say? Too aggressive. They're thinking about it. This is where you could hit the your go button. Let's try to incite a riot. All right. 
This is going to be interesting. They're going to gain two life a cycle. I can't do anything about that. So my hawk has to be the most killer hawk that has ever been a hawk. And then we need to draw all that glitters. Bam! <laughs> We're going to gain so much life, too. This is going to be absolutely ridiculous. Like, they might not even be able to Zenith flare me out. If we draw an Alcide Life's Bounty to protect the Lurus, like, it's... It's going to be absurd. But in the meantime, we have to sit through this. The Endless Cyclotron. All that glitters. We could just end this now. Come on now. All that glitters or an aura that gives a plus two. Another blessing. No. Denied. I mean, what are you going to do? This hawk is epic. They're thinking about flaring. They only have four cards in the graveyard. Meet the Mega Hawk. Sure. Why? <clears throat> I mean. How much cycling do you have? You need to gain enough life to live through the hawk. That seems like a pretty loose play to play the rescuer there. All right. Six versus nine. Nice. And we are back. I promise you the deck was competitive, and this time out the deck absolutely delivered. Six in one record in Mythic, going from 93% to 96%. So if you're wondering whether or not to invest all of your common and uncommon wild cards into this baby, yes. If this is a playstyle you enjoy, I think you should. There is something almost delightful about clowning opponents with glaring Aegis solid footing ginger brute it is it, it's a trip it's very fun so yeah give it a shot a few adjustments you could make to the deck just as a reminder you can run castle Ardenvale, the white castle uh one or two of these i would not run for you don't need them that badly you rarely have that much mana to sink into it but if you're willing to put a few more rares or you already own one of these it's a pretty easy swap to put in the deck Second thing that you might consider, Stone Coil Serpent. This is a rare, and its protection from multicolored makes it very difficult to deal with. You could add this to the deck. If you were to do that, I would take out one or two Sentinel's Mark for one or two Stone Coil Serpent. I wouldn't go much more than that. So those are a few changes you could make if you want to get rare in here, but I don't even think it's required. This deck is far better than it looks and far more fun than I thought it would be. Maybe that's because winning is fun. So uh, big, uh, a big, big thank you to the Cool Kids Club for watching all the way to the end. Welcome. Hope it was worth it. How do I end this video? I don't know. Check out my Twitch stream. Monday through Thursday, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come over to Twitch and see the nonsense we do. Deck Doctor Thursday is coming up today. I'm recording on a sub Tuesday, which is where my Twitch subs send me decks and I play them. It is a subscriber perk on Twitch. So yeah, check that out. It will be fun. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Like and subscribe. Okay, bye.